Hi everybody, it is Monday the 24th of July 2023. Um, please remember I'm a psychic clairvoyant so everything is entertainment purposes only. Full disclaimers down in the box. First off, I want to thank Mystical Fortunes for the fun afternoon we had on Saturday. She and I did a video together, a, a live stream, and it is, if you go to my homepage, you see live, and you can tune in and watch it. It's like we have almost, we're getting close to 500 views on it already, so let's see if by the end of the day we can get it pushed to 500. Um, so, it, it, and I have her link and to her channel in the box and I will put the link to the video in the box also today so it's we had so much fun we covered so much information and um, just keep your eyes out on both of our channels for notification of the next one so it's we, we just kind of like mesh together so well on it and I want to thank everyone who's tuned in to watch it and all the new subscribers so just let's keep on going. Um, towards the end of the video, I did bring up that one of a loyal viewer to so many channels today is going in for um, a medical procedure. I know this video is going to go up after she's uh, the scheduled time, but everybody knows if they... If the hospital says a procedure is going to take place at one time, it's usually about an hour later. <laughs> so technically, she's going to be having it done at 3.30 Eastern Time Zone, 3.30 New York time. That means 2.30 Chicago time, 1.30 Mountain Denver time, and 12.30 p.m. Los Angeles time. So even though we're seeing this at 4.30 p.m., which is 5.30 out east, 3.30 in the mountains, 2.30 in L.A. Please, everybody, let's just keep sending Jamba healing vibes, healing energy, that after the procedure, everything is going to go fantastic. So let, that's, please, everybody do that. Um, she goes by Jamba on YouTube, and she does have a Twitter, Twitter handle that's... Uh, Princess Jamba, G-A-M-B-A. -A. So everyone, please, please send out healing vibes for uh, Jamba today. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, now, um, okay, now we've got that out of the way. I'm sorry about there were some questions that had come in on the commentary sections, our community pages that we weren't able to get to. Um, but, um, I'll go through them real fast. Someone had asked, are, were Henry and Rachel, it, it was, was it a demand for them to leave the UK? I don't think it was a command as a royal command, but I believe it was very strongly suggested to them that they might be happier living elsewhere. So um, we did cover that more in topic in last Saturday's live stream. Uh, Oprah and the school in Africa. Yeah, certain people are, things are coming out about it. And um, I've always had a a feeling why isn't she doing something in her own backyard so um, so instead of doing something here in the United States or in Chicago setting up an, a school for kids uh, a private school for kids to get a better education at instead she opened the school in Africa for just so she could cherry-pick students it's real fishy and um, even another well-known celebrity kind of like backed off of it. I mean, I'm not too too fond of this woman, 
and I have my own personal reasons why I'm not crazy about this celebrity, but it's, yeah, somebody that Rachel wants to get close to, Oprah wants to get close to her, but, um, how do I say this? How do I describe her? Um, everybody think of the fairies out of the fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. Well, there was the one fairy that wasn't invited to the christening who kind of like put the spell in Sleeping Beauty. She would prick her finger. The name of that fairy, that's who this actress has done in a couple movies. I mean, she lost her wings and stuff. So I think you can figure out who it is. But I have my own personal reasons why I don't... I'm not a big fan of hers. And I kind of take everything that this woman says with about two tons of salt. But I guess she was hitting it right on uh, the stupid stuff that Oprah was doing. Um, yeah. So... Uh, also keep going. It's, um, there's a couple of these goofy little channels that give snippets all the time. Um, one of them that's, it's two, it's two word title. It's R and then the letter U. Start listening to them very, very closely because they come off to be pro uh, BRF, but in reality, they're very passive aggressive towards the BRF and they're very pro H and R. So listen carefully to them and their new target is, is going to be, they're going to try and bash Andy more, which is really, my abilities, I've gotten a different gut feeling as to what's going on. So it's, like I've said numerous times before, guys who serve in the military when they are of a high rank of sorts, they never really leave government service. So I still always am still getting the feeling that Andy was chatting up the Miami dude and then giving the information back to the people in the green building that's always featured in a James Bond movie. So, um, that's what I feel is going on. And, um, it's a lot of things. And one of, okay. Oh yeah. It's, uh, now, Sky Aussie News is now making noise that it's now coming out that the people that got the whatchamacallit, a side effect of it is um, you now put the, um, the virus into your body. And let me say, okay, let's, the guys that served in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Uh, a lot of them came back with malaria in their bloodstream. So at any times, day or night, it could be 20 years later, they would come down with about a malaria. It would resurface. Well, that's a true fact, a medical fact, that once you've been bitten by a mosquito-carrying malaria, yeah, you're going to get sick. You're going to get healthy again, but you always have that virus in your system and you could have a malaria flare up at any time for the rest of your life. Well, folks, those who got the whatchamacallit, um, yeah, and you've got, it's, look at it, you're, you're going to get flare ups of that stuff periodically for the rest of your life. So you basically have that in your body and you're never going to get rid of it. You're trapped with it for the rest of your life. So, yeah, doing what the government tells you. Hey, take a look at Germany during the 1930s. Everybody did what good old Adolf and those guys were telling you to do, and we all can see what happened then. So, this could be uh, the, everybody being forced to stay at home for nearly three years. Those who followed all the policies and procedures were 
good little citizens, just like, hey, I didn't know what was going on in Germany. I didn't know Adolf's plans, but now you can, by doing what we were told to do, now hopefully you can understand why the big H thing happened. People were very complicit. Complicit people. Bad stuff happens when you're too complicit and don't ask questions. Uh, now, things I'm questioning are um, all of a sudden now, there's Greece, there's a lot of islands in the Mediterranean on the south end of it, and they're big vac vacation spots. Well, now it's like everybody, it's almost like a Dunkirk evacuation. Right now, because on the isle, on Rhodes and Corfu, there's these horrible wildfires, and the first thing they're doing is evacuating the tourists, but they're la leaving the long-term residents basically to sink or swim. They're leaving them on their own, when maybe they should be, uh, besides doing evacuations, maybe they should be getting those uh, planes that dump millions of gallons of water down on, a wild f on forest fires. Maybe we should be getting a few of those out to pick up seawater to dump on the um, fires that are happening on the Greek islands. Uh, let's see. Um, the, uh, we now know they are releasing it in drips and drabs that the former prime minister, I think his name is Khan, former, former prime minister of Pakistan is now in deep doo-doo when it comes to uh, legal issues. They're now finding him supposedly responsible for some things that happened, and he's going to be landing in the courtroom soon. So uh, let's keep, like, um, check on that periodically. Yeah, the um, it's, it's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Now... Yesterday, Sunday, I guess the reason why they do it on a Sunday is because most people have off and they, um, Spain is primarily a, relig a country that people attend religious services on Sunday. So after they go to service, then they can go and vote. Well, it's, uh, I guess the party that's on the right side is the Vox, V-O-X, and it's Supposedly, they got a vote of like 169 of, I guess, their electoral votes. And then the socialist, the Iki Party, got 153. Now, that's not really a clear majority, according to Spanish law, because there's a couple other parties, little ones. So now the Vox and the socialists have to talk to these smaller parties that get like maybe 20, 30 votes to align, who are they going to align with? So whoever has a coalition majority, that will be running the running Spain for the next several years. So uh, I'm sure someone that can keep us more abreast on it is Avid Gardner, but I'll keep my eyes on it also. So, um, yeah, she, she may say something, but let's put it this way. The socialist people who only got 153 votes, um, they still are trying to enforce a lot of the nonsense that uh, General, General Franco put in as rules and regs. Um, I mean, he kept his stern thumb on life in Spain all the way up till the time he died. And I remember going over there when I was a younger kid and getting off the airplanes, I would see these guys walking around with machine guns on the tarmac. And I'm, I asked my daddy why. And he goes, because the leader of Spain is a, for, is a member of the military and he wants to keep things safe. Now, that's my dad explaining it to me as a child. He goes, now remember, please don't ask any 
questions only if you're like at a museum and you want to ask a question about something in the museum that's the only time you should be asking questions and be very careful about what you say to people around us we um, can't talk about certain things you can only talk about the sightseeing you've been taken around to see so I was like seven eight nine eight seven eight nine years old and I was as an American child I was being told certain things I can't talk about and this was in Spain this is when Franco was still in power and um, his followers the socialists want to keep that fierce authority on happening so I, I hope some of these other smaller parties do align themselves with the uh, Vox people. So maybe, let's put it this way, um, expats who live outside a jib don't have to wait two, three hours to get through the checkpoint Charlie so they can go get medical attention, if only for that reason. Um, Another thing, okay, now we're starting to hear more and more about uh, protests in Israel because of the judicial reform bill. And now I finally did some further digging and I was kind of like, okay, let's, I'm backing off of it, but I talked to a friend over the past few days and we, she's, um, she explained a lot more about it. Now, Netanyahu is the prime minister. Now, what they want to do is you got the prime minister, that's the executive branch, and then you've got the judicial branch. The exec executive branch wants to take away all power from the judicial, judicial branch of government because they were checks and balances. So they want to take it, eliminate the power that the court system has, the Supreme Court, so the executive branch can be a full-fledged dictatorship. Uh, before the judicial branch, the Supreme Court, if they saw a law coming out that was very one-sided or wasn't legal, the judicial branch cancel out that law. Well, the reform bill is now taking away the right and the authority of the ju judicial branch to call out and remove the illegal maneuvers not and the dictatorship of the executive branch. So that's what people are going batshite crazy about in Israel. That's the story. Uh, okay, I, um, okay, and I was able to catch my favorite Swede this morning, and again, he was talking about the whatchamacallit, and like I said before, people who get it, it's like you're going to be living with malaria for the rest of your life. You're always going to have flare-ups. So I think that was intentional, to make sure that people are always living in fear of getting sick well as long as we know that um, the medication that belong starts with R is no good and the stuff that starts with I is the real um, medication to be taking people need to demand that if they catch it from somebody who was foolish enough to get the whatchamacallit they get the I stuff and take it and um, hopefully can eradicate it out of our bodies hey I don't have it I'm tested. I don't carry that stuff. Uh, so, and I've got a serious immune, ser uh, even though I deal with an anti and uh, a, a, technically I have a compromised immune system due to the RSD CRPS, I don't seem to catch stupid stuff like the flu, any kind of flu. And I haven't since 68, 69 when I had um, they, back then they called it the Hong Kong flu. That was the last time I've ever had a flu. So, haven't had one since then. So, I must have 
pretty strong resistance to that kind of stuff that flies through the air. And um, also, our favorite suite is making more noise about um, the Big Mouse Company, Mickey's Company, has redone a uh, live action variation of the fairy tale Snow White. Well, the young, the woman, the actress that's playing the lead character doesn't fit the physical description. And the seven dwarfs, uh, they decided that they weren't going to be, they're not being played by little people. So why don't you retitle it? It's no longer Snow White and the seven dwarfs. It's Mickey's woke interpretation of a classic fairy tale. So that's all it is. And, um, it's sad that these kids are now going to be, that's why children need to be taught to read as early as possible so they can read the traditional stories. And so when they go to the movies, they realize, hey, this is missing. Or this isn't how the story goes. Why did they change it? Teach the kids to read. Read them the original stories in their original forms. Then when they start hearing the, hearing the story told differently, the children are being taught to start to ask questions. And once you start asking questions, you never stop and you don't fall for somebody's um, propaganda. Teach the kids early to read. Teach them to ask and ask why. That's a, something we really, really need to do. Now, um, I caught a snippet. I haven't been able to find more information out on it. But um, I guess in the UK Parliament, there's a bill going up that pertains to being able to snoop on cell phones. I mean, it's social media, cell phone privacy. Well, I guess if this bill goes through, they will have to eliminate uh, the WhatsApp feature and the FaceTime features off of cell phones. You won't be long be able to use those two things of social media. So um, if someone in the UK can keep an eye on that, that would be great. Give us more information. Now, um, something I'm laughing about. And it's all over here in the States that's uh, down in Florida. Some scholars decided to put together a history curriculum that actually told the truth. Well, Cammy Poo has got her knickers in the twist. I don't even know if she wears knickers. Yeah, because I guess she likes to be easily accessible to people. Cammy Poo is having a fit and going around and blatantly lying that the um, Cal Florida school districts are uh, basically teaching the wrong history when they actually are teaching the correct history. And it all, it all traces back to um, the fact that she's, what, Indian and Caribbean, well, and she's extremely mixed race. So one of her races is being offended. A part of her is being offended because they're saying, oh, people who were owned by such and such, they were, they were like learned trades and stuff. They learned stuff that would profit them upon freedom. Well, yeah, it's true. Uh, did they, sewing machines were actually invented as early as 1850? Uh, how to be a wheelwright, a blacksmith. Uh, were there blacksmiths in uh, Africa? Did um, people in Africa raise um, herds of 
cattle, breed horses, raise poultry, um, learn how to make cheese from milk and butter? I don't think so. Back in the 1800s, you see the civilization in Africa wasn't as sophisticate, sophisticated as it was here in North America or Europe. So, of course, when they came, and unfortunately they were sold by members of their own race in Africa, they were taught new skills on how to live successfully. That's why when emancipation happened, certain people walked around 40 acres and a mule, so that way they could have their own little farm and, and be able to feed their families. If they were given 40 acres and a mule in Africa, do you know, do you think they could have known what to do with it? Doubtful. So, Cammy Pooh is willfully ignorant, and this is the type of idiot that we've got as vice president. He heaven knows what's going to happen to our country when JoJo is um, 25. Uh, they'll probably put uh, Cammy Poo up a notch, bringing gruesome news some, and then Cammy Poo will have to resign because of a <laughs> nose candy issue. Then we're really going to be in hot water. But um, we we have to keep aware. We have to call out Cammy on her lies, and um, we have to make sure that there's just more than the selective talk topics of the bad side being taught to the kids in school. Now, as of kids being taught the wrong nonsense, um, Greta Thunberg's back in the Swedish courts. Of course, she's mumbling out the word salad. that That's all she ever knows. But I was taught, and most of us know, that if you're going into court, you don't go in there looking like a slob. I mean, this chick, it's like her hair was messier than Rachel's. I mean, stuff hanging out all over. I mean, the, out, you could see through the collar of her shirt, not only did she have the little hanger loop, but both of her bra straps were showing. It was wrinkled on top of it, and she had on jeans that were like pants that were too long for her that needed to be hemmed up, and she was wearing sneakers. She went into a courtroom looking like a slob. So, here, you want to be taken seriously? Chicky boo. I'm not going to take any anyone who dresses like a slob the way she does. I'm not going to take you seriously unless you start taking your appearance, appearance seriously. So, yeah, I don't... Maybe somebody... Hey, Ikea? Could you send... Greta Thunberg, a full-length mirror, so she knows what she looks like before she leaves the house? Let's all, maybe we should call up Ikea and say, hey, provide her with a mirror so she's not so embarrassing, so she knows what she actually looks like. I mean, somebody needs to teach that girl. Where's, uh, what's-her-face, uh, What's her name? Jessica Mulroney? I mean, she wasn't su successful in teaching Rachel how to dress correctly, but maybe she could teach Greta Thunberg? Can't hurt. Oh. Um. Now, every day we're seeing, I'm seeing more and more on, uh, every day we all are seeing on the international news about this Just Stop Oil Clowns. Uh, and they keep throwing this orange stuff all over the place, like powder and confetti, orange paint. Can't they be charged with vandalism and um, littering because of all that orange dust and paint that they're tossing around? I'd like to see that uh, cleaned up. Go out and pick up every single piece of confetti or paper that... You've tossed. I bet it would take them a uh, quite a few hours. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, um, we all know that over the past week or so, the uh, IRS whistleblowers have now started talking about uh, money that has gone into the JoJo family bank accounts, and no one paid taxes on it. Now, it's now coming out that the reason why we weren't finding out about this earlier is because the executive branch was putting heat on the Attorney General and the Department of Justice to not prosecute the offspring of JoJo. Now, this is the same kind of nonsense that they want to start doing in Israel. Whatever the executive branch wants, the executive branch gets, and the courts are no longer effective. Here in the United States, we've got the executive, judicial, and legislative branches of government. Three parts. Well, JoJo is basically not letting one-third of our government the judicial branch doing its job. They said, no, don't go snooping into my background in finances. And now, hey, little Hunter is now going to plead guilty to a misdemeanor. Hey, I got, I did a commercial ages ago. Not only did my agent send me a 1099, but the company that I did the commercial for sent me a 1099. It took a hell of a lot long time to make the IRS understand, no, this is the same, I got paid by the same work and somebody screwed up by giving me a 1099. Yeah, that's how, so when they, when the IRS finally decides to get their teeth into something, they don't let it go, especially if it's a small person, but unfortunately, if you're the offspring of a sitting president, you don't have to pay taxes. You don't even have to file an accountant to find the loopholes. And it's all because daddy has told the, the attorney general to tell the other people, don't penalize my baby. Yeah, I'm pretty sick. Now, uh, I'm kind of laying low on the royal family, but I have noticed some stuff. Again, like some of these other news blurb channels, the one with, that starts with an R and the next, the letter that starts the next word is U. I, I get, they're basically, I think they're a sugar run organization because they lo watch carefully, listen carefully, and you can see that they are very passive aggressive to the BRF and in a backdoor way, very positive kind of defending the actions of Henry and Rachel. Now, um, there, then somebody else, you know, um, I'm hoping I'm saying this correctly in German, but it's, uh, Bird of Landa, um, that channel, I mean, one of her, one of the recent ones where she was comparing QE2 to Maggie Thatcher. Now, there's all sorts of stories going on that they didn't get her along, they did get along, this and that, but you have to realize these are two women who were raised in two different economic structures and how they both lived through WW2 um, is sl similar but still completely opposite ends of the economic spectrum. So they, but they did, the women were able to bond over the fact that yes, they had children and at who were in similar ages and both women at times had 
their sons in danger and they were both on tender hooks until the situation was revolved, resolved. Maggie, when her son was MIA during that uh, auto race, and then for QE2, when uh, Andrew was flying helicopters during the uh, Falkland situation. So both of them were being moms. Even though they were both basically the two women running the country, they were both moms and they both could understand how a mother's heart feels during the time where she knows that her child may not come back, come back walking, talking, and breathing to mom. Okay. Oh, now the, oh, we all have by now have heard the rumors that, yeah, I guess that girl who plays tennis, um, had some sort of big party and, uh, she was supposed to be friends with Rachel. Well, the tennis player had the party and the guest list. Rachel didn't make the invite list, but, uh, what's her face? The, um, egg donor to Kanye West did. So I guess Rachel's pretty upset about that. And I'm laughing because, okay, they were up in Santa Barbara, a few hours north of LA. Well, now they're cruising around looking for stuff in Malibu. Um, basically they, what they're going to be able to afford is a massive downgrade from what they had, where I think all they had was a rent to own agreement on that house in Montecito, Santa Barbara County. It was rent to own and they couldn't come up with, they couldn't get a contract. So that's why they had to bug out. They're bugging out of there. That's why they're looking down in Malibu because believe it or not, even though housing prices are ridiculous, it's still cheaper than uh, Santa Barbara. Malibu, you can get a basic house that here in the Midwest, okay, in the Midwest, it'd probably go for five hundred to eight hundred thousand. It goes for two to five million in the Malibu area. Yeah, I'm talking. A basic like four bedroom house you've got your kitchen dining room probably office and basement laundry room and then a like a, a great room family room for the kids to play in it's maybe what three to four thousand square feet max going for anywhere between 2.5 and 5 million in Malibu and that's what they're to have that's what a lot of it is available because they've got um, a lot of building code restrictions because of just the physical location of Malibu. The ground can't support bigger stuff. Now, uh, something that popped up and I think it's funny that, uh, we know that Prince Albert of Monaco married this woman, Charlene and Charlene tried to help Rachel out just like her late mother-in-law, Princess Grace, helped Diana out. Well, Rachel wasn't going to listen to anything Princess Charlene had to say. I mean, we know that um, rumor has it that after the birth of the children, Princess Charlene went into a really extreme case of the baby blues and truly hasn't recovered from it. That happens to many women and uh, that's why she's not seen out and about as much in Monaco. But Princess Charlene, when she was feeling better, she did try to reach out to Rachel and help her out. But again, Rachel snubbed another royal who was willfully offering advice. Rachel knows best. Sorry, honey, you're not uh, Robert Young. Or maybe she wants to be. 
So, um, I guess she, she thinks she knows best, but it's not going to make it, you're not going to have your own version of a TV show doing that. Especially with William Morris having you under contract, William Morris Endeavor having you under contract. They're your talent agents. They negotiate every single contract for everything you do now. You might have a contract to produce stuff for Netflix, but in order to make something, make product for Netflix, you have to form your own limited liability corporation for that production which means you have a contract with that limited liability corporation. Of course, William Morris Endeavor is going to look over that contract. Technically, you're going to get paid. You're paying yourself, but you still are getting paid. They're going to look at the contract and they're going to make sure that the check is cut to them first. Then after they take their percentage, talent agency percentage out of that check, you get the remaining balance. So I don't think she's realized what she has done to herself. She's going to be losing money. But we all know she acts first, thinks about it later. Just like that docu Netflix docu-series. She made a fool out of herself making that faux curtsy. And here it is. You were in July now, and it came out in, in November, so we've got August, September, October. No, this thing happened nine months ago. Now she wants to go in, and she's telling Netflix she wants to re-edit the series. So there, she wants to remove stuff and possibly put something else in stuff that landed on the cutting room floor, old footage that she tossed away. So she wants to take out her little faux curtsy, which everybody cringed at, so she realizes how embarrassing that is. So she wants to re-edit that episode, take that faux curtsy out, and put in new footage. And by doing that, then she boosts the viewership numbers, because everybody wants to see what she stuck in when she took that out. I'm just like, the woman hasn't a clue. Absolutely clueless. So, um, pretty much that's what I've got for you today. Uh, again, I want to thank you to thank everybody who's been watching the live stream broadcast that was filmed on Saturday the uh, 22nd. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, everything, all the legality stuff is down in the box. I have now set up, I do do private readings. If you want one, shoot me an email. Um, and I will schedule a time. I do it via telephone or messenger, whatever. And, uh, I now have put in that, uh, hooked into that buy me a coffee thing, but... I really don't, I only drink a little bit of coffee in the morning. I usually drink like, okay, I'm in America. I drink tea, cold tea, and I drink cream soda. So if you want to buy me a can of cream soda, I'd appreciate it. So uh, everyone have a great day. I will be, Wednesday is the 26th, and I'll have a new video up and out there. And yes, I have in the box the description, the link to the live broadcast, and the link to Mystical Fortune. So please go over there, watch her videos, and give her lots of likes, lots of thumbs ups. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, yes, and don't forget, send out good vibes to Jamba for her medical procedure today. She needs them, okay? Healing vibes. Bye-bye.